What up YouTubers, Double O Rooster Glass here. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on glass jars. Um, this is a 25mm cobalt blue standard tube. Um, what I'm going to do is be pulling a point. Before you get your preparations done, you're going to want to check all your gear, make sure everything's intact. Got my ventilation system hooked up, got my eye gear. Um, everything's about safety first. What I'm going to go ahead and do is pull a point on this 25mm tube. This is a Bethlehem Barracuda torch and uh, it serves this purpose very well. Um, a few things, uh, this is all 100% um, entertainment purposes only. Do not be attempting any of this at home unless you are skilled in the arts. That's all I can say on that. Don't want no uh, problems or negative feedback. We're going to go ahead and detach the tube. So what we're working with is this. I'm going to go ahead and do some decorations and do some silver fuming on it. And what that enhances is the color spectrums on it and also it's going to give it a really cool look when I add some clear here in a moment. So we're going to go ahead and do some stack theming on it, get it nice and colorful. You always want to know what uh, flame setting you're on. You want to be very familiar with your torch. Um, it's a very important stage um, and a delicacy. You can uh, mess up with the wrong settings or you can totally get lucky and score with the right ones. So I suggest while you're doing some of your uh, decorations and some of your glass work, go ahead and take note. If you're using a neutral flame or reducing flame, an oxidized flame, uh, what the end result is. Do some journaling, as a matter of fact. Write down what it is, how you did it, maybe how long the project took, and uh, you'll be able to go back on a reference and use that. At least that's what I found in my experience to be good because I uh, came out with some really cool pieces and had no idea how I did them. So the journaling aspect really helps out. And I got to say, I really love working with this cobalt blue. It's very strong um, as to comparison to some of the ambers and emerald greens that uh, tend to do some cracking. Black is another uh, difficult one um, that uh, because when it cracks, you really can't tell what uh, where it is cracked. Because normally I can hold it up to the light and see if it's got any imperfections or cracks on it. What we're going to be doing now is I'm going to be gathering the glass. This is actually going to be the bottom of the jar. Okay, so this is going to be the bigger portion. So I'm going to blow this part first. The part towards my hand is going to be the cup at the very top where the cork is going to go. So I'm going to get this as hot as possible. Sinking in the color coordination that I put in and the clear that I put in right now. And start gathering the glass towards my hand letting it to get to a nice hot molten honey, which is where we want it. And then when it's ready in a second, then uh, we'll go ahead and blow it out and give it its, give it its shape and form it. So we are just about there. do is go ahead and do a cold seal honey up to the bottom. If you don't know what a cold seal honey is, I suggest you figure it out quickly, otherwise <laughs> glass blowing will be very difficult. Um, I like to go ahead and honey up, this way I have more control towards what's going to happen um, when I blow the top part out. This way it doesn't get top heavy or bottom heavy. And I can still keep it on the spindle and just keep it going. Happy glass is hot glass. 
wise glass blower once told me. Okay, we're getting to the point where we're ready to blow this. shape here. We're going to snap off the cold punty. Go ahead and give her an edge. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sink the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and make where it's going to rest right on the bottom, right where I want it on my graphite pad here. Make sure it likes where it's at. Because if you don't, it can give you some problems down the road. Always want to preheat your claw grabbers because they tend to suck the heat out of the objects that you're working with and it can cause cracking. Now what I like to do is go ahead and snip off the tip because it's easier for me. Let me go ahead and get up here and do it. Okay, this is what we're working with. We're going to want to open up this hole using some sort of graphite. Normal graphite will not do. It's going to have to be a very strong graphite. You can go through any sources. Mountain Glass, Sundance Arts is another good one, ABR Imagery. Uh, they give me very good prices. I want to say a good hello to them for uh, treating me right you know, over the period of time that I've been blowing glass, which I'm an amateur. What I'm doing is I just keep heating this up and keep opening it up. And as we go, it's gonna to get to the desired range where I can use my brass reamer to gauge it out and know exactly what size that I'm working with. What I did was I went to Home Depot and bought a black brass plum drop, bleh, and, uh, rather than buying uh, something a little more expensive online. Some tools for glass blowing is very expensive. And, you know, me personally, I don't have that kind of money. So, okay, what we'll do, turn this off. And there is our jar. I'm going to throw it in the fiber blanket and then eventually over to the kiln. And then uh, once it's done, there's your jar. So, Double O Rooster Glass signing out here. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want. And uh, I'll be doing some more tutorials here in the near future. Thanks very much, you guys. Have a good one.